I do the botany and the non-native invasive species and the special forest products, but 16 national forests. So there's, there's a lot of diversity there, you know, and there's a lot of different plants, which is my thing. So it's a real joy. Getting a community garden up and going, identifying invasive species and native species. We consider this uh, being keepers of the earth, keepers of the garden, if you please. The Energy Audits is a great program, and energy efficiency is a great cause. What really attracted me was the idea of community gardens um, to get the various churches throughout the UP to implement community gardens. How God is a part of our environment. How do we care for that? What can we do to be better stewards of God's creation? Community garden because we just see a need for it. We need to be mindful that our communities are our places to dwell and we have to keep them healthy for ourselves, for our kids and grandkids. With this project, I see a huge opportunity. Our congregational gardens or faith gardens become the pollinator gardens for everybody else's garden that the church is being seen, or the synagogue, is being seen as the servant of all the community gardens because we have the real pollinators. They provide us with an essential ecosystem service, pollinators. We can't do without them. We care for the pollinators. A part of our garden is set aside for the pollinators. An avid gardener. I have noticed the absence of certain pollinators. The families will be able to use the, uh, the produce that they grow on their plot, and the balance will belong to the church, but that produce will go into our food pantry or the one at Faith and Rock. Information about the local food pantries and how to grow food for a food pantry. She bought this for 16 national forests in 20 states. She's in charge of their plants, 16 national forests. And she came from the ground here. She was botanist at Hiawatha National Forest and then created this first seed bank storage uh, greenhouse that is the east of the Mississippi, essentially. And it stores native plants. So she's the real deal. Listen to her. As a science person, unique means like maybe the only one. So we may be approaching the only one in this model. Uh, and I think it has a huge potential. With this project, I see a huge opportunity to try this in significant land holdings, places of worship and then moving that out to the general public when they begin to see how this works. And that collectively between, between the people that can be involved in this and the amount of land, that's not small. It can be very meaningful. The importance of pollinators and native plants and non-native invasive species. The garden aspect of this then is an opportunity for us to exhibit a way to be what some people, you've heard this phrase, light on the land. And if you compare that notion of light on the land to the TV this time of the year with the advertisements for lawns. Give you a lot of jump on next spring. It's no wonder lawns get miserable. People have got out all kinds of spray bottles and tractor things and rototillers, and they are going for it. They're going to beat that lawn into submission. It will look green, and it will be one species. And there's a place for that, but it's not everywhere. And this becomes um, especially critical now as we use more chemicals in our lawn than we use in our agri for our agricultural foods in this country. And essentially, we're at war with dandelions. Dandelions, it's just a dandelion. <laughs> we brought them into this country as, as early greens, you know. Uh, greens that people could eat early in the spring when they were probably inches from scurvy. And they do not change ecosystems. They just make lawns look 
less the way you know they're supposed to look in our heads. <laughs> so you know that's one piece of this that is very attractive from the standpoint of what we can do as stewards and the the role that we can play in showing people what you know what's kind of at stake here. So. Um, there's a message in this, there's an opportunity in this. Duplication would be very flattering if other churches did this. It would be the ultimate form of flattery, just like the word Earth Keepers when that was ensconced is, was very flattering. Well, if you talk about Earth Keepers too, you know, if you were to summarize, it's got two targets. You got two years, two targets. One is the 40 audits and energy workshops. Uh, within parishes, and the second is establishment of what we hope is 30 gardens. That's our target right now, and that would mean, uh, you know, immersing yourself in the garden world a little bit, working with Kira to uh, support the parishes that already have gardens, to do, uh, be willing to maybe work with Jan and whatever to create some mini garden workshops sponsored by the faith community. Now remember, what we've already got going, and this is one of the secrets here that we've got, we've got the technical knowledge available, but we need the human capital and the strategic plan to make things happen. Kira told me that her research says to really get a garden up and going with some landscaping and things, the figure that she used was two to $4,000. And, you know, from La Flora and my experience at my campus ministry, is that's what about it costs to go, uh, apart from people but, that can... Uh, well, and that's, but a lot of that can be in kind. In kind. You know, a lot of, that's, I mean... Like that's what about it takes. People who can drive the trucks or who have mm -hmm. to yeah. can bring the soil in and things like that. Do we have people who would be interested in working on some energy workshops uh, in terms of possibly representing this group and talking about the project, both the garden and energy, but primarily focus on the energy. And of course, Kira will, and Doug will be right with you on that. I want you to hear again from our students what they've been doing, because they've been meeting every Friday morning since the news conference. And I want to hear, I want them to tell you what this experience has been for them, planning their own workshop for dorm gardens. So they're going to parallel us at the university herb gardens and things. And when when uh, Jan said to, said to us, you know, these church gardens need to have a poll they need to be pollinator gardens, like with butterflies and, and milkweed. And I thought, wow! Now here's a connection for you, where our congregational gardens or faith gardens become the pollinator gardens for everybody else's garden, that the church is being seen, or the synagogue is being seen as the servant of all the community gardens because we have the real pollinators. We care for the pollinators. A part of our garden is set aside for the pollinators. We're serving the whole community. I mean, what, a, what an incredible vision that would be, and people would you know, wow, there's the church again, serving the community. There's the faith community serving. So this pollinator piece, and it's, it's threatened. 